Finance is often a mysterious and confusing world for people, but at the heart of finance are some pretty simple concepts. One of these simple concepts is the idea that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar in the future. This idea is often referred to as the time value of money. In this video, I introduce this key concept. Along the way, I also discuss and provide examples of present value, future value, compound interest, and annuities. After viewing this introduction, you should be able to calculate the present value or future value of a cash flow stream at any point in time. Mastery of this simple skill will save you money when tackling some of life's most challenging financial decisions, like consumer credit decisions, mortgage choice, saving for retirement, whether to lease or buy a car, and many others. But let's start with a simple example. You're offered the choice to take $100 today or $100 one year from today. Which would you choose? If you're like most people, you'd prefer the $100 today. After all, $100 in your pocket today is certainly better than the promise of $100 one year from today. But let's make this choice a little more interesting. You are now offered the choice to take $100 today or $108 one year from today. But let's also introduce one more fact into this problem. Any money you have can be invested and earn a risk-free return, denoted with the letter R on the board, of 10%. To determine whether I prefer the $100 today or $108 in one year, I need to think about the possibility that I can invest in my $100 at that 10% interest rate. If I do so, after one year, I will still have my original investment of $100, but I will also have earned 10% interest on $100 or $10. My savings balance after one year would be $110. It should now be obvious that I would not choose the $108 in one year. Why? Because I can take the $100 today, invest it at 10%, and have $110 in one year. In this example, the $110 is referred to as the future value of $100 invested at an annual interest rate of 10% for one year. Future value is often abbreviated with the letters FV. In this example, the $100 we are offered today is referred to as the present value of $110 one year from today when interest rates are 10%. Present value is often denoted with the letters PV. While this example is simple, the basic idea of present and future values is crucial in understanding many financial decisions. Now let's see what happens if we invest $100 for more than one year. If we have the willpower to leave our savings alone, this graph reveals how our money will work for us. We start with $100 today. After one year, we will have $110, as we discussed in the prior example. $10 of interest, denoted in red in the graph, and our original investments of $100. After two years, things get interesting. We continue to earn $10 in interest on our original investment, so after two years, we have accumulated $20 of interest on our original investment of $100, as is shown in red in our graph, in the column corresponding to year two. However, and this is the key insight, we now also earn interest on interest, or compound interest, of $1 in the second year. This $1 of interest is 10% of our $10 interest in the first year, and is just a small sliver of green shown on the graph in the column corresponding to year two. Note that our total savings balance, including the $1 of compound interest, is $121 after two years. While the compound interest in this example is small, it's only a dollar after two years. We will see that compound interest can have a huge effect on our ability to accumulate savings over longer horizons. Now, people often find it useful to think about the time value of money using a timeline to mark the relevant cash flows in a problem. This is extremely useful when the problems become complicated. But let's just start with the previous example and demonstrate the use of a timeline. Recall that we start with $100 and are offered a risk-free interest rate of 10%. We denote today as a period zero on the timeline, and the two hash marks represent years one and two. After one year, our investment of $100 would grow to $110, which is equal to $100 times one plus the 10% interest rate, or 1.10. 
After two years, our investment would grow to $121, which is our year one account balance of $110 times one plus the 10% interest rate or 1.10. Note though, that I can also calculate the balance of the end of two years by multiplying our original investment by one plus the interest rate plus 10% squared or 1.10 squared. By squaring one plus the interest rate, denoted in red with two on the board, we automatically incorporate compound interest into our calculation of the future value of $100 at the end of two years. In fact, in general, the future value of an investment, FB, is equal to its present value, PV, times one plus the interest rate, R, raised to the power T, where T is the number of periods over which the interest rate is earned. Similarly, the present value of an investment, PV, is equal to the future value of the investment, FB, divided by one plus the interest rate, R, raised to the power T. Let's now think about the impact of compound interest on our savings balance after 10, 20, or 30 years. Let's just continue with our simple example of investing $100 today at an interest rate of 10%. In our first scenario, let's just assume we only earn interest on our original investment of $100 each year. In other words, we only earn $10 in interest every year and we do not earn compound interest. Now this is sometimes referred to as simple interest and the red line in this graph shows how our savings balance will grow over time when we earn only $10 per year. At the end of 10 years, we will have a balance of $200. Our $100 investment will have doubled. After 20 years, we will have $300. After 30 years, we will have a balance of $400. Now let's see what happens when we earn compound interest, which is how interest will generally accrue in the real world if we let our savings work for us. The blue line in this graph shows how our savings balance will grow over time when we earn compound interest. In the early years, there is little difference in the accumulation of savings when we earn compound interest instead of simple interest. In fact, in our prior example, we found the difference was a mere $1 after two years. However, the difference grows in time. After 10 years, the account that earns compound interest has grown to almost $260, or $60 more than the account that earns simple interest. After 20 years, the account earning compound interest has grown to $672.75, more than double the account that earns only simple interest. And after 30 years, the account earning compound interest has grown to almost $1,750, more than four times the value of the account that only, earns only simple interest. Compound interest is clearly important in thinking about how your savings grow over time. And to this point, we've been focusing on how to determine the future value of an investment today. Let's see how we might turn this problem around to make the concept of present value a bit more concrete. Let's assume you'd like to save $20,000 to help with a down payment on a home in 10 years. How much would you need to invest today to meet your savings target if your investments are in 10% return each year? With some reflection, you should now recognize this is a present value problem. We know that we would like to have $20,000 in savings in 10 years, and we will earn 10% on our investments over the next 10 years. So clearly we need less than $20,000 in the bank today to meet our 10-year savings target. Let's write this down on a timeline to make things clear. As before, I use hash marks to represent years and write the year above the timeline, but to save time, I break the line in the middle where there are no cash flows. Now we would like to have $20,000 in 10 years, so let's put that on our timeline. And we want to calculate the present value of the 20,000 at an interest rate of 10% over 10 years. Applying the basic present value formula, we find we need $7,710.87 in the bank today to meet our savings target of $20,000 in 10 years. Now the important insight here is that if you have about $7,711 in the bank today and indeed earn 10% return in each of the next 10 years, you will have an account balance of $20,000 in 10 years. Of course, if you earn more than 10% in each year, you will reach your savings goal sooner, while if you earn less than 10%, you will reach your savings goal later. 
Note that this is just a simple application of the present value formula that we discussed earlier, where present value PV equals future value FV divided by 1 plus the interest rate R raised to the power T, the number of investment periods. In this example, the future value FV is $20,000, the interest rate R is 10%, and the number of years we plan to invest T is 10. So we plan to invest our $7,711 for 10 years and watch it grow to $20,000 after 10 years. The examples to this point have demonstrated the concepts of present value, future value, and the importance of compound interest over longer horizon. Let's apply these concepts to another example. Let's assume that you've won the million dollar lottery. Unfortunately, this does not mean you will receive a check for a million dollars but instead means that you're going to receive 20 annual payments of $50,000. Now, the total value of these payments is indeed a million dollars, but you now realize the present value of those 20 annual payments is not worth a million dollars. Let's say that the lottery payments are backed by the state of California, so the risk that we will not receive one of these payments is quite low. Most economists would argue if the cash flows are risk-free, we should use a risk-free interest rate when calculating the present value of the lottery. Though the risk-free rate will, of course, vary over time, let's assume that we can earn 5% risk-free interest in this example. Let's start by creating a timeline for my 20 annual payments. And though I break the timeline after two years, we of course receive the annual payments in each of the 20 years and receive our last payment 20 years from today. Let's next fill in the cash flows that we expect to receive in each of the years on the timeline. We receive nothing today and $50,000 in each of the next 20 years. And to save space, I omit three zeros and write each payment as $50. Now, I could calculate the present value, or PV, of the 20 annual payments by adding the present value of each of those 20 payments. In other words, I would sum 50 divided by 1.05 plus 50 divided by 1.05 squared and continue with the summation to the last payment of 50 divided by 1.05 raised to the power of 20. This calculation would yield a sum of 623.111 as shown on the board. Because of the time value of money, the fact that the million dollar lottery is paid over 20 years, the million dollar lottery has a present value of $623,111. Again, this is represented by the 623.111 on the board, since we omitted the three zeros from each of the annual payments. Frankly, I'd still accept a lottery win, but if someone offered me a cash payment of $700,000 or the million dollar lottery win, I'd prefer the immediate cash payment of $700,000. Why? Because I could invest that $700,000 cash payment at the risk-free rate of 5%, and generate annual cash payments exceeding $50,000 per year for each of the next 20 years. In this example, the 20 annual payments of $50,000 actually represent an ordinary annuity. And in general, an ordinary annuity has fixed cash flow payments each period for a fixed length of time. We can modify our example to fit the more general case by changing year 19 to period T minus one, changing year 20 to period T, and adding period T plus 1. Let's now also add the general notation for the fixed cash flows in an ordinary annuity, denoted with C on the board. Note that we have zero cash flow today or in period um, 0, and we have zero cash flows in period T plus 1 and beyond. Let's also add an infinity symbol to our timeline to make it clear that there are no cash flows after T. In general, an ordinary annuity can be valued with the following formula. C divided by R times the quantity 1 minus 1 over 1 plus R raised to the power of T. Note that there are three required inputs in the formula. C, the periodic cash flow. T, the number of periods over which the cash flow is paid. And R, the interest rate used to value the annuity. Of course, we could use the annuity formula to value our lottery win. Note that in this example, the lottery example, C is 50, R is equal to 5%, and T is equal to 20 years. By using the annuity formula, 
I would find the present value of the 20 annual payments of $50,000 is indeed $623,111. Note that this calculation is somewhat easier than summing the present value of 20 additional cash flows as we did before. Perhaps more importantly though, the general annuity formula is a very powerful valuation tool that can be used in many applications. Take a moment, think about some cash flows that you encounter in everyday life that are like annuities. There are many examples and for this reason, the annuity valuation formula has broad practical applications. You might want to review the concepts discussed in this video, but with a solid understanding of the time value of money, you are now prepared to tackle many financial decisions that you will encounter in life, including consumer credit decisions, mortgage choice, saving for retirement, whether to lease or buy a car, and many others.